<clears throat> first we're going to start with a question. So the question is, what factor is associated with decreased range of motion to impingement? We know that impingement is important. Impingement creates uh, damage to polyethylene. It creates uh, problems with uh, dislocation. The options are one through four, as you can read them here. Uh, the uh, answer to this question is a skirted modular femoral component, and the reason that's important is because it effectively increases the diameter of the neck of the uh, prosthesis and leads to early impingement. Uh, the three answers three and four, uh, obviously those are not out of range for uh, cup position. And answer two, trapezoid neck geometry is one way of decreasing the size of the um, femoral neck, however, it is not the preferred answer, uh, and it would only be in effect uh, depending on whether you'd hit the edges of the trapezoid or the area where the uh, material is deficient. So the answer there is skirted uh, modular uh, femoral head. That's work uh, directly out of our laboratory as well as other laboratories in the past looking at what leads to uh, impingement. So um, prosthesis uh, design, <clears throat> we're going to talk about the success of total hip arthroplasty and the biomechanics depend on the design. The bearing surfaces, uh, obviously the, how the uh, lubricity of these surfaces uh, uh, is achieved is important and also different methods of uh, fixation. Um, the design, uh, uh, we will talk about femoral components, uh, both cemented as well as press fits uh, components, acetabular components, uh, press fit as well as cemented as well as bearing surfaces, poly metal and uh, ceramic. Uh, total hip uh, prosthesis uh, design, the history, you can read through this slide. Clearly the uh, use of arthroplasty began in the late 60s in the US and the concept obviously was originated by the seminal work of uh, John Charnley. And he termed uh, this concept low friction arthroplasty as the small femoral head was used to reduce wear because of the type of material that he was using in the first arthroplasty and the high wear rate associated with it. So he used the smallest head possible. Uh, as far as uh, cemented femoral components, um, if you look at cemented components, they rely on cement fixation, the interdigitation of the grouting material between the bone and the implant, it's not a glue, obviously, it's a grout. And uh, cement is preferred um, for a radiated bone, uh, obviously, that's bone that would be uh, in various phases of remodeling with bone li life as well as bone death, where there would be limited ability for ingrowth. Also in certain types of uh, stem uh, canal geometries, um, Perhaps a, a more stovepipe would be one that you would want to cement. Generally, these components are made out of cobalt chrome um, because of its uh, strength and its ability to reduce the stresses in the cement, uh, in the surrounding cement. Cemented femoral stems, uh, stem breakage can occur. I can tell you that in my practice, uh, early on in practice, we saw a fair number of these. Uh, I can't remember the last time a contemporary cemented stem broke. Uh, if a cemented stem is going to break, you know, you would lose your fixation above, as you see here in this radiograph, where you have uh, um, uh, loss of fixation above and the stem is plotted distally and it breaks uh, in this area, sort of in the mid-stem. So a uh, very, very unusual. Uh, however, um, uh, you really need to look at your radiographs carefully because I have seen patients that have gone to two or three different doctors and ultimately came to uh, another doctor to be seen and, uh, you know, uh, at one of the views. On one of the views you saw maybe just a little bit of a step off and then later there was a catastrophic uh, failure of the stem. So be careful when you're looking at a patient with a cemented implant with pain. Look very carefully at this of the, at the component to make sure there isn't any fracture. It's very unusual. Press fit stems um, rely, if they are in growth stems, rely on biologic fixation. It can be both in growth as well as on growth and they rely upon uh, the implant initial stability to provide fixation that's um, long enough for the implant, for the bone to grow into the implant. They're generally uh, different types, tapered stems, which are very, very uh, popular, that are proximally coated, that uh, taper distally with a great ease of insertion and very good initial uh, stability. Extensively uh, coated stems that or fully porous coated stems where the porous coating extends down the uh, entirety of the stem itself to gain uh, fixation maybe in the metaphyseal, late metaphyseal, early diaphyseal area. And then obviously modular stems that can be mixed and matched to the 
a particular geometry of the of the uh, femur, more popular in revision, sometimes used in primary, but mainly in revision. Uh, what are the unique complications of press fit uh, femoral stems? Um, these are ingrowth stems, intraoperative fracture. Uh, obviously, they are more, more likely. Uh, these have to, you have to be a good carpenter. You have to look carefully at the orifice of the femur when you put these stems in. If you're, we had a rule that uh, if you're driving the stem and it stops, you stop. If you continue to hit the stem and the stem moves, you've probably broken the femur or at least created a crack. So you've got to be a very good carpenter in doing this. Um, uh, other unique complications of uh, these stems is early loosening. Um, due to lack of ingrowth, it's an early uh, finding, not a late finding. And then this new thing, and uh, there'll be, we won't be covering this today, but it's an important one to think about, and that is this junctional corrosion that's seen in uh, modular components uh, at the uh, at the Morse taper. A very important concept that's becoming more and more important as we move forward in arthroplasty. Uh, bearing surfaces are important in design, uh, primarily metal on polyethylene. Uh, obviously has an excellent track record, low cost, and, um, and uh, virtually has eliminated uh, periprosthetic osteolysis. Uh, disadvantage is, um, and I'm not sure if this is a distinct disadvantage, but if you look at cross-link polyethylene in particular, um, osteolysis rates are near zero at uh, greater than 10 years now. However, they do wear more than a metal-on-metal metal or ceramic-on-ceramic, ceramic, but the, lo the wear rate is so low and the complications are so ro low that these are preferred uh, materials. And um, also disadvantages. Uh, with uh, polyethylene, you can you know, generally use smaller heads. This is a theoretical disadvantage uh, when compared to, uh, for instance, metal on metal. But that's uh, more of a theoretical disadvantage than anything else. So let's go to a question uh, now. Let me catch up with my slides here in front of me. Um, uh, this is question 49. What clinical outcome is associated with total hip replacements that have metal on metal bearings compared to total hip with metal on polyethylene? Uh, you can read through the answers uh, here. The, obviously, the, the concern that we have today with uh, uh, metal on uh, metal implants is this uh, problem uh, with pseudotumors. Um, and these are thought to be related to the highest uh, higher levels of cobalt and chromium in the bloodstream um, and uh, some type of a, a systemic reaction, a type uh, unknown, but we'll talk about it a little bit later, but a systemic reaction that leads to these large tumor-like conditions uh, with uh, fluid around the hip itself. Again, metal on metal, uh, it's a good lead-in question. Uh, obviously, they have excellent uh, wear uh, properties, uh, lower uh, linear wear rate, decreased uh, volume of particles, um, but high numbers of particles. And obviously, the larger the head allows for increased range of motion before impingement. And here's an example in this uh, photograph of the, the ratio between the head and the neck, this important ratio that uh, determines the uh, impingement uh, with range of motion. Uh, the disadvantages of metal-on-metal metal surfaces are they are obviously more expensive in this, in this uh, metal ion problem with uh, both serum as well as urine. Uh, high levels of uh, ions in the uh, high levels of metal ion concentrations. And just like you uh, would see uh, in an automobile engine, this wear in or run in phase, it's why you change your oil uh, generally early to get rid of all those wear debris that occur when you first run an engine. The same is true on a metal on metal bearing. It's just like a piston inside a cylinder. Um, these uh, higher concentrations are seen within the first 12 to 24 months due to this run in phase. Uh, there is no proven cancer link to date uh, with metal on metal surfaces. And as you know, the issue of pseudotumors is an enormous one and has had great impact on the use of metal on metal uh, implants. Disadvantages we talked about, hypersensitivity, type 4, delayed type hypersensitivity. And this is a T cell mediated process that is integrally related to the activation of macrophages. Um, and cytokines, which then reactivate T cells, and it forms this vicious uh, circle. So the activated ma macrophages uh, present uh, classes, uh, MHC classes. They also release uh, IL-2. It leads to T cell activation, and the cycle continues and continues and continues. 
Uh, obviously, metal-on-metal -metal surfaces are disadvantages, under disadvantage of their contraindicated in pregnant women, patients with renal disease, and clearly anyone who has a history of metal hypersensitivity uh, due to uh, metal ions. Metal-on-metal -metal contraindications, we just uh, reviewed those. Let's keep going. So um, total hip prosthesis design, uh, let's go to the question. It says a 56-year-old gentleman uh, presents to your office one year after a total hip seen uh, in figure A. He's concerned about the potential complications in the media with his implant. He is currently asymptomatic. Which of the statements uh, are true? Uh, obviously, you can, go, you can read through the answers here. The, um, the uh, correct answer is that there is no correlation between activity level and serum levels of ions. We, don't, we know a lot of there's a lot that we don't know about metal on metal at this date, but we do know that this is uh, indeed the case. Obviously, you don't check liver function tests. There's no increased uh, risk of developing cancer, at least shown to date. And the other two uh, answers are obvious. So important uh, to know about metal on metal and the complications of metal on metal. Let's go now to the next question. In a total hip prosthesis using a large diameter ball, for example, a 36 instead of a 28 can improve stability. All other factors being equal, the volumetric wear of the bearing surface would be expected to be greater with a larger diameter uh, due to longer sliding distance per step. However, in laboratory tests, metal on metal bearings, larger diameter metal on hips uh, have shown wear rates comparable to conventional smaller. What is the most likely explanation to this? And obviously, I read through that very, uh, very quickly. Uh, it's important to understand that metal on metal bearings operate with this um, a lubrication mode, which uh, has a fluid film between the two surfaces. There is contact, and in other places it is separated by a, a fluid film. So as the diameter of the bearing surface increases, and if you move a large bearing surface over a certain area versus a smaller bearing surface, uh, you would have a larger bearing surface having a greater sliding speed. All other factors were unchanged. So the answer is larger bearings have greater sliding speed. What about ceramics? The benefits are the, they have excellent wear properties, the lowest wear that we can see, ceramic on ceramic. Um, they have a low coefficient of friction, obviously, as a, that's the reason why the wear properties are so good. And uh, they have uh, particles, I wouldn't necessarily call the particles uh, inert because um, they can create a reaction, if you, certainly if you have third body runaway wear, and we'll show you an example of this. So disadvantages are they are clearly more expensive. Um, there are different types of ceramics, and uh, zirconia seems to be the one that has won the day when compared to alumina. Uh, another distinct disadvantage is squeaking, and if you've had patients with squeaking, you know how uh, disconcerting it is to have that patient walk into your office and squeak as they get up on the exam table. Um, it's in, uh, obviously a, a real problem, uh, thought to be due to edge loading, often seen in thin, flexible titanium stems. Um, the ceramic on ceramic also have less modularity, again, due to the breakage issue, so you don't have as qu quite as, uh, the same number of neck options available. And this unique uh, property called stripe wear, and you see an example of this here in the slide, caused by contact between the femoral head and the rim of the cup during partial separation that occurs uh, with gait. And it results in this crescent, uh, this crescent shaped line uh, on the femoral uh, head uh, itself. And this has been shown in lots of different uh, papers. Let's go to the next question here. 56 year old male undergoes revision of his hip for pain. Radiograph suggestive of ceramic femoral head fracture. So you see a fracture. Um, Multiple fragments of the ceramic head were seen in the joint and soft tissue. Clearly a problem. He irrigated things out. Um, it was exchanged for metallic uh, femoral head. And 12 months later, uh, there is repeat groin pain. And the radiographs show no abnormalities. What's the reason for the pain? The reason for the pain is the fact that you cannot remove all of these uh, particles. There are These particles are um, uh, often not seen. They're in the surrounding synovium. It's very, very difficult to get them out, and uh, this patient would have massive third body wear again due to the retained ceramic uh, fragments. And this is, again, out of the literature. I think Bill Maloney and others have written about this. Bearing surfaces, uh, ceramic on polyethylene, another um, bearing surface. Um, 
and um, oftentimes uh, used uh, in uh, patients who you don't want to have the liability with ceramic on ceramic, but you'd still like to have a ceramic head, and you can use it on a polyethylene surface. Disadvantages here, um, and this is uh, something you uh, should have picked up from your uh, review, that uh, zirconia undergoes this uh, tetragonal to monoclonic phase transformation over time, and um, it uh, leads to a higher wear rate as the surface uh, roughens uh, over time. And um, this is a, a known problem with zirconium. So here we have a six-year-old woman, recurrent dislocation six years after a zirconium on poly. Um, CT shows that there is wear, two millimeters of wear. Uh, she undergoes revision. Examination of the head reveals a glossy surface. However, scanning EM uh, revealed increased surface roughness circumferentially with multiple craters and cracks. And the reason for this is what we just discussed, and that's this phase transformation that occurs with uh, zirconium. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.